27th race weekend for the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup returning to the birthplace of the sport, Samaritz in Switzerland. The first track action, the men's skeleton competition on Friday. Into the second heat, a tightly packed top half dozen. Felix Keisinger of Germany, fresh off another bronze medal the week before on his home ice in Königsee, again turning on the afterburners. New start record for him at the beginning of the second run and spearing into the lead way ahead of Jan of China. In fifth place after the first heat was his teammate Alexander Gassner with three Germans in the top half dozen. The coaches were hopeful of medals, particularly since Gassner had been the bronze medalist here just two years ago. But mistakes crept into his run from early on and he dropped down the order. At the line, he was behind and disappointed, Keisinger closer to another medal. Keising was still the leader as we got to the top three, including our final German slider, Axel Junk, silver medalist on this track just a year earlier. Junk saw his 1900s advantage over Keisinger drift away on the slower second heat, and he would be in second place at the line. At least one German was in the medals, but Junk was downcast. Two to go, including a six-time winner on the track. But Martins Dukos hasn't even claimed a medal in the last two seasons in Samaritz. All that was about to change. A great second heat with a really quick start and flowing lines put him into the lead by three-tenths of a second. A great shout for the medals. Final sled on the ice, the winner for the last two years. With three wins in the last four, Sun Bin Young of Korea. He'd only been 200s in front of Dukos from the first heat. By the time he got down to the signature corner horseshoe, that had comfortably evaporated. He never found the speed at the line and finished out of the medals. Win number 53 of Martins Dukos' career, Yun off the podium, behind Felix Keisinger, a career high silver, and Axel Jung, redemption in bronze. Martins Dukors takes the World Cup points lead as they head to the final race of the season. <laughs> Following on from the men, women's skeleton action on Friday afternoon. Russia's Elena Nikitina had set a brand new start record for the season in her first heat and after placing fifth in run one, she set a better start to try and challenge for the medals. She was less than a quarter of a second away from gold and a great run would put her into the leader's box with four to go. Among those four, two former winners, including Janine Flock. The 30-year-old in her 80th World Cup start has three wins in Samritz under her belt. She dropped behind the Russian rocket at the start, but as ever found pace on the fast 1,700-meter track to move into the lead. Just 100 quicker than Flock was last year's bronze medalist. In 2019, Jacqueline Lerling of Germany had claimed her first ever Samritz medal. Now the World Cup leader was behind at the start, but again, from horseshoe on down, built her speed. The FES sleds flying through the forest for the Germans, a new track record to take the lead. No German has won on this track in women's skeleton in nearly a decade. Mimi Reneva has twice though in the last three seasons. The 31-year-old Canadian again in the mix in front of Lurling heading down into the forest from Horseshoe, but the speed ebbed away and she was in third place at the line. The final slider was our first heat leader, Tina Herman. Tina, with two silver medals in the last three years, has never won in Samaritz, and she was about to turn that around. The 27-year-old taking the lead, and after setting a new track record in the first heat, broke it in the second to go away by four tenths of a second and claim a German 1-2 ahead of Jacqueline Lurling and Janine Flock. Mimi Reneva 100th off the podium, and it's Lurling who heads the race for the Crystal Globe with one round to go. Saturday morning, first sleds on the ice, the women's bobsleigh. 
Switzerland's Martina Fontenev had her best ever result here in Samaritz two years ago in fifth position. That's where she lay after the first of the two heats. Everybody expected the track to get faster in heat two. That didn't happen, but Fontenev did tidy up some of the mistakes that crept in in her first run to take the lead from Misha McNeil. Just 300s quicker than the Swiss lead in the first heat, Canada's Christine de Brown and Kristen Budzinovsky. They didn't manage to match the pace of Fontaneva down the Swiss track though, and they dropped back a spot. That would leave Martina Fontaneva in the lead with three to go. Stephanie Schneider, last year silver medalist, the year before bronze medalist in Samaritz, with Leonie Fee big behind her. Big starts, a new start record, but she nearly crashed out of Nash and Dixon. However, she recovered her composure enough to take the lead of the race with two sleds still to come. Schneider had done enough for a medal, but would it be enough to beat her teammate, the world and Olympic champion, Mariama Yamanka? Like Schneider, never a winner here. Like Schneider, a silver and a bronze in the last two seasons. And it looked as though she was going to drop behind, but she grabbed just enough at the line to lead by a hundredth. The first heat leader was Kaylee Humphreys, the US slider last one here six seasons ago. She led by 1900s, slipped getting into the sled, but that was about the only mistake she committed on the run down the 1700 meter hand-built track in Samaritz. She raced away to claim her fourth win of the season by 1600s of a second, her first win in Samaritz in six seasons. And she and her break woman wishing their best to Alana Myers-Taylor their teammate. Happy baby shower, Alana and Nick. Kelly Humphreys leads the World Cup standings with just the final race of the season still to come. <laughs> Warm overcast conditions on Saturday afternoon for the two man encounter. Fifth after the first heat, Canada's Justin Cripps and Cam Stones. With the four fastest start, they were still three quarters of a second off the flying leader, but hoping to move up. Cripps has had a bit of a love-hate relationship with this track, but this was a good day for the Canadian. Holding on to his position ahead of Germany's Nico Walter and leading with four to go. A big day as well for Russia's Alexei Stulnev. His best ever result here, fifth position a couple of years earlier. His best career result in a two-man, a pair of fourth places. Make that now three fourth place finishes. A career high here in Samaritz for the Russian. Three spots to go and three podium positions left open. Oscar's Kibermanis, his best result here in a two-man of bronze medal last season. He was in third place after the first of the two heats and he held off the challenge from Russia's Alexei Stolnev to guarantee himself at least another bronze. Just 400s ahead of the Latvian after the first heat was Francesco Friedrich. He and brakeman Alexander Schuller set a brand new start record. They've never yet lost a race together, but today they would be in front of the Latvian, guaranteeing themselves at least a silver medal, but with one sled still remaining. Johannes Lochner was the first heat leader by a third of a second. It was his first World Cup race in a two-man since December in Lake Placid. There, he'd beaten Francesco in the first race, lost to him in the second, but here there was no going back. Despite a couple of tiny errors, he still won by over two tenths of a second. His second win in three two-man races this season and the fourth two-man victory of his career. A jubilant Christopher Weber and Johannes Lochner, the winner here, Francesco Friedrich still the World Cup points leader. Sunday morning and the battle for the Crystal Globe in the final race of the four-man world championship promised to be thrilling and it delivered in spades. Francesco Friedrich needed sixth position if his closest rival Johannes Lochner won the race. After the first of two heats, Lochner led. Friedrich only in seventh and a similarly nervous second drive didn't help him much. It moved him ahead of the current leader Hunter Church, but there were still six sleds to go. Friedrich needed help from above. 
Friedrich's prayers had not been answered by teammate Nico Walter, who beat him to lead with five sleds remaining. Li Chunjian of China in his sixth ever bobsleigh race, his first at World Cup, was the real salvation. He slipped down the order. And finally, relief for Friedrich. He was in the top six. Next up, Benny Meyer, fourth after the first heat for the Austrian, whose career best is a silver medal here, but he too couldn't hang on to the pace he'd found in the first heat, and he dropped behind Nico Walter and Francesco Friedrich to third. Into the top three and in the medals after the first heat, Oscars Kibermanis, bronze medalist last year, a winner here three seasons earlier, still his only four-man World Cup win. He overtook Nico Valta and headed up towards the finish line with a handy advantage. Could it be that he'd claim his second career win in the first place that he ever won? Justin Cripps' career best here in a four-man sled, 11th place, second after a really neat first heat, dropped behind the faster starting Latvians early on, but outdrove them at the bottom to take a clear lead with one sled remaining. Germany's Johannes Lochner won the two-man race on Saturday with ease and he looked similarly comfortable in the four-man first heat. He had a handy advantage of 1,500s over Justin Cripps, but then the mistakes crept in. The gap disappeared. He was behind in the fast section of the track and never regained his composure. Third place at the line, victory for Justin Cripps of Canada, his fifth career win, his third of this season. Justin Cripps, Oscars keeper Manis, Johannes Lochner, the podium. But fifth place was just enough for Francesco Frugge to claim the four-man Crystal Globe for the second straight season ahead of Lochner and Cripps.